Hi everybody. Welcome to Audubon at Home. I'm Tracy and this is Fort Wildlife Refuge in North Smithfield and there's so much here. We have ponds, we have woods. It's a great fun place for the whole family to explore. We even take people out owling at night looking for owls. So today we're going to talk about how to look for signs of animals by their footprints or tracks or parts of their bodies, leftovers that they leave behind, and any other clues and signs that we can find. Be a detective and help me solve the clues of what animal was here. Come along. So, we're gonna look for signs of animals leaving chew marks. One of the signs that animals leave behind is evidence that they were eating. So chews are left behind on the tips of plants and bushes. Uh, deer and rabbit will eat the, the tips of the, of the buds of little branches that are coming off. And you can tell that because their front teeth, which are very sharp, will uh, leave a little fray, will bite off the tip of the, of the branch or the bud and it will fray the wood. And that's a sign that there were some deer eating along. And I found some right here, some browse is what it's called, when they eat little bits of the tips. And if you come over here, you'll see on this holly bush, some sign of deer browse. So the little tips of these branches have been bitten off and they're kind of frayed a little bit and splayed out. So this holly bush is something that deer love to eat. They'll eat the buds and the tips of the branches. They'll eat the leaves. And from the height of where it is for deer and the fraying done by their teeth, I know that some deer were chewing and this is what's left behind. Rabbits will do the same thing. They'll be a little lower and they won't have as much fraying. Their teeth leave a little point that sticks up and it's more of a, a clean cut. Whereas deer are a little bit sloppy when they chew off the, the tips and the buds of the branches and they leave the little fraying at the end. Let's keep going. So, did you hear that alarm call? That is the call from a blue jay. Now blue jays and other birds, when they sense danger, maybe the danger is you walking through, like Miss Sharon and I are walking along, or maybe there's a predator, another animal that could be a hunting animal that they don't want around. And so they'll call out an alarm to say danger, danger to all the other birds. Oh, and there is a chickadee. The chickadee just made its alarm call. It says its name, chickadee, D, or sometimes it goes D, D, D. And again, that's its way of saying is either there's danger here or it's telling other chickadees, this is my place where I live. So you can listen for signs that animals make that they're around, just like those birds. <laughs> so let's see what else we can find. Follow me. Ooh, look what we have here. Here's another sign of animals that's been left behind. So animals that have beaks, like woodpeckers, for drilling into trees, they leave holes. And their beaks are really special so that they won't hurt, get hurt drilling and pounding into the bark, the tough bark. And then they stick their tongue, which is barbed and sticky inside, and they pull out either some bugs or some, some woodpeckers will drink some of the sap that's inside trees, that flows inside the tree. So these holes 
are signs of some woodpeckers that were pecking through the bark. So that's a good clue. So here's a woodpecker hole that's a pretty good size. And that probably could have been a pileated woodpecker. Pileated woodpeckers have big red crests. Um, some of your parents or grandparents might remember woody woodpecker. And uh, that's the kind of woodpecker a pileated is. And when you see big square holes in trees, you know it was that big pileated woodpecker that was drilling into the wood, looking for bugs and little animals to eat that live inside these dead trees like this. That's a great find. Ooh. So here's another sign of little animals leaving something behind. This is an egg case, also called a gall. Here's a picture of a different kind of gall. And here's a picture of a blueberry bush gall, which is what this is. So this is a little blueberry, low bush blueberry. And this little gall was made by a little insect. The mother will uh, lay her egg onto the, the wood material and the wood of this little branch will swell and a little baby fly or wasp will be growing inside and this little gall um, is really just a little egg case so another sign of animals is is places that they lived so this little gall when that egg uh, turns into a larva of, a, of the little insect will bite its way out of this little egg case and then it will go on to be an adult with wings and fly off so there's all different kinds of galls. This is just one kind that you can find as a detective. Look at this, there's a, here's another browse evidence that a deer was here chewing on this briar. This little fraying tells me, yep, there was a deer that came by and took a little munch on this briar. Deer like briar. Briar is this right here. It's prickly and they eat the leaves and they eat the vine, the stem part as well. The little thorns don't seem to bother them. I see evidence of a waddler, a waddler, a waddler that likes to cut down trees with its teeth. Can you guess what it is? That's right, a beaver. Check out this picture of a beaver. And if you look across the pond, can you see it? I see lots of sticks all piled up, packed together with some mud. That's the beaver's den or its lodge. And so that's a sign that there's beaver living in the pond. There's nice and cozy and warm inside there. And they don't have to come out because they can eat the branches. They have so all those sticks that they have, they have some on the inside of the lodge. And while they're inside, they're all cozy and warm. They can nibble on those branches and that's their food. They actually eat the inner bark of trees. So they cut down trees and there's lots of stumps left behind from years past. They're what we call storers. Storers make sure they have plenty of food to get through the winter. Squirrels also do that too. So there's beavers inside that lodge and they're eating all the wood that they stored on the inside of their lodge. Or you can call it a den. And it's their house, it's their home. So here is a sign of beaver activity. This is from beavers chewing on this tree many years ago and this is what's left behind you'll see the stump of the tree here's the tree they cut down and you'll even see some teeth marks one of the reasons i know a beaver cut this and not a human with an axe or a chainsaw is because i can see the teeth marks from the beaver's front teeth which are sharp 
and they always, when they chew on the wood, they leave a point. So whenever you see a stump and you see teeth marks or you see a point, then you know that that was done by a beaver. Here is another kind of nesting box that Audubon puts up at ponds and it's called a wood duck nesting box. Wood ducks are ducks that like to make their nests in holes in trees and sometimes they need some help. There's not enough trees along a pond uh, with holes in them for them. So you can put up a nesting box. And this is the right size and the hole is just perfect for the little babies when they're ready to crawl out and they jump into the water in the spring. So here on this pole, this is called a baffle. It's to make sure a raccoon or, or any other predator can't get up and get at any of the babies that might be inside in the spring when there'll be baby wood ducks. So this baffle makes it hard for them to climb right up. So you may have seen a baffle on a bird feeder, maybe in your backyard to make sure squirrels uh, don't get into the, the bird seed. So these are just to keep out animals that might want to get into a nest or a bird feeder. So we're in a different part of the pond. And you can see how busy the beavers were. This is a beaver dam. Notice that a lot of the branches that they carried and put together have those pointed ends, just like the stump that we saw. So look at what we have here. This is a nice vernal pool. Now, these little, little dips in the, in the ground allow for water from the ponds to kind of fill up and the water will stick around sometimes in the fall and into the spring and then by summer this water will dry up so it doesn't stay here all year round and it's not very deep but it's a perfect place in the spring for frogs like wood frogs to lay their eggs and have tadpoles and they have tadpoles that hatch in these from these big jelly-like blobs that are their eggs. Maybe you've seen them. Here's a picture of wood frog eggs. And you can listen to the wood frogs calling in the early spring or sometimes in the late winter. And it sounds like ducks quacking. They need these little spring pools to lay their eggs and they don't have to worry about fish or turtles or any animals coming and eating their eggs or the tadpoles. So that's why they like these pools of water that fill up and dry up really quickly. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Audubon at Home and I hope to see you out on the trails.